Happy Thanksgiving, friends, and welcome to St. Paul's. It's good to be together as the family of God. Those of you who are here are especially welcome. Those of you who are online are also especially welcome. It is good to be able to praise the Lord together. We have a number of guests who are here either to cheer on Christine or to heckle her. I, I guess that we will find that out soon enough. Uh, Christine, our intern, is going to be bringing the word this morning, and we're glad to be able to give her her initiation into the world of preaching the Scriptures, which is uh, it's kind of an awesome thing. Ever. Let's worship the Lord together as we sing the song, His Mercy is More. This is one we began to learn last week. Please stand. Love could remember no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all knowing, he counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is Father so tender is calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. was the payment, his life was the cost. We stood beneath the dead we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land of flowing streams and pools of water, with fountains and springs that gush out in the valleys and hills. It is a land of wheat and barley, of grapevines, figs, and pomegranates of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and copper is abundant in the hills. When you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. But that is the time to be careful. Beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey His commands, regulations, and decrees that I am giving you today. For when you have become full and prosperous and have built fine homes to live in, and when your flocks and herds have become very large and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything else, be careful." Do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. 
Do not forget that He led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its poisonous snakes and scorpions where it was so hot and dry. He gave you water from a rock. He fed you with manna in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and to test you for your own good. He did all this so you would never say to yourself, I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant He confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. Let's pray together. On this Thanksgiving Day, our God, we look back to our ancestors, even the ancestors of our ancestors. We hear that reminder from Deuteronomy of how important it is to remember Your grace, Your wisdom, Your mercy, which is always more than we need, more than we can ask or imagine. How we praise You, our Father, for Your kindness. There are so many things that we take for granted. And perhaps only at an occasion like this time of year do we remember just how important it is to be grateful. We confess that, Lord. We don't always give thanks. We know that this has been a year when giving thanks for circumstances may be more challenging than others. But help us to give thanks in all circumstances. For as the Apostle Paul tells us, this is Your will for us in Christ Jesus. As we turn to Your Word today, Father, Grant that Christine will know Your presence and Your empowering wisdom as she leads us through the Scriptures. Grant that we will find ourselves challenged, encouraged, and renewed for a new week. For Your mercies are new every morning. Great is Your faithfulness, our God. So help us to listen with obedience. We ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the Reformed tradition, it is the custom to invite a preacher up by shaking hands, but today I think it's going to be elbows. What do you say? <laughs> Friends, it is with great joy and gratitude that, I, that I'm here this morning and I'm able to bring the word to you. Thank you for having me. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 17, Verses 11 to 19. As Jesus continued on to Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten men with leprosy stood at a distance crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God! He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus said, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, 
stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. On October 4th, 1996, my husband and I came to Canada with two pieces of luggage, one with books and one with clothes. It was a beautiful October day, just like this, sunny. And as the plane touched down, we thought how wonderful it would be to have the warm sun against our skin. Well, of course, in October, that doesn't happen in Canada, and it was cool. So we thought, you know, this is going to be okay. We can get used to this. However, within 24 hours, we realized that an October day in Canada can have four seasons. Spring in the morning, summer at noon, and fall in the evening. But get this, we can have snow at any time, yes. We've had many October days with snow. So we thought, you know what, we'll have to get used to this. And we set out to get a job. We thought we'd be able to get a job within a week. Guess what? As a new immigrant, finding a job in Canada is not as easy as we thought. There is this thing they call Canadian experience. And when you land as a new immigrant, you don't have any Canadian experience. And the, the system has not caught up with that. So we were a little bit taken back. We came with great expectations, and now we had to switch gears. So we sent out many applications, and after about 50 applications, Robert Half Employment Agency called me for an interview. So on this fall October day, I got dressed, armed with my umbrella, and I went for my interview. Now, that distance was a little far away, and I had to take two buses to get there. So I got there, went for the interview, didn't go too well, but that was okay. That was just my first attempt. But on the way home, something happened because by then it was evening. It started to rain. And in October, when it rains, you can't have heels on like we ladies do with a skirt suit. It's not going to work. So I was going to learn a very important lesson. I saw the bus coming from afar, and I started to run. I needed to catch the bus. Well, my umbrella quickly flipped up because it was windy, and the bus flew straight past me because the driver didn't see me. I was soaked, and I was cold, and I was shivering. And I thought, oh my goodness, what did we come to in this country? When I got home that night, I told my husband, I'm going back to Trinidad. He said to me, you can go if you want, but um, I knew my mom wouldn't have me back. So, so, so I had to stay. So I said, okay, you know what? We'll do this together. I felt like a stranger and a foreigner. I felt like a double foreigner in Canada. So we just toughened up that evening and we said, let's do something else. Let's see how we can make this work. So the next day, friends took us to a Sears warehouse to buy coats because obviously a little sweater was, was not going to do us in, in this Canadian weather. So we, we went to a Sears warehouse. And the warmest coat I could find was a dark red, size 12 in tall Jessica coat. Now ladies, picture this. A petite eight with a tall size 12. You know, you know what I'm talking about. But the best part of this was, the price was right. 
It was affordable. Because when you come to Canada with Caribbean dollars, your dollars turn into pennies. So we had to make good choices. I got home that night, hemmed up my size 12 coat, and you know what? It fit like a long gown. It was so perfect. That coat was warm and cozy, and it doubled as a blanket. A few weeks later, I got a job at the Hudson's Bay Company in Toronto. Little did we know that, you know, that was a pretty decent store to work at, but you wouldn't believe what department I got to work in, the coats department. So I had to learn about coats. The Lord had some plan for me, and it was going to be revealed in time. I spent many nights on the subway from Toronto to Mississauga, curled up in my coat, which doubled as a blanket. And I was so grateful to have it. The Lord sent us to this destination, Canada, and he provided the direction. And my husband and I took up the challenge with great determination. Who would have thought October 11th would meet us in the middle of of a global pandemic, where the world has changed the way we live from just eight months ago. Today is Thanksgiving Sunday. For many, it marks the beginning of the fall season, where the aroma of apple crisps and pumpkin pies fill the air, and people around the country enjoy elaborate meals with friends and family. For this Thanksgiving, though, the Medical Officer of Health has advised that we don't do that. Avid farmers and gardeners put their gardens to rest as they harvest what is left of our crops. Yesterday, I picked 50 tomatoes from two tomato plants. I thought, wow, never before had I seen that. Tourists from around the world come to see the kaleidoscope of colors. Just look outside our window. Tourists come to see this from around the world, and we take it for granted. Driving up here, I was just admiring the scenery coming up on King Road. It was so beautiful. The first official Thanksgiving in Canada was celebrated on November 6, 1879. Though indigenous peoples in Canada have a history of celebrating the fall harvest that predates the arrival of European settlers, Sir Martin Frobisher and his crew are credited as the first Europeans to celebrate a Thanksgiving ceremony in North America in 1578. And in 1957, Thanksgiving was proclaimed an annual event to occur on the second Monday of October. We don't know if Jesus healed this leper in October, but what we do know in this miracle story, unique to this gospel, is that Jesus is moving east to west along the boundary between Samaria and Galilee. Unlike many healing stories in Luke, This story lacks any physical contact between the hands of Jesus and those who suffer. There is no rubbing of spit on eyelids or massaging of bumps on a crooked spine. As Jesus enters a village, ten lepers call to him from a distance. Lepers were outcasts from society. They were expected to isolate themselves from people. There is no better time than now to identify with lepers. If you are tested positive for coronavirus today, you have to isolate. COVID is probably the leprosy for 2020. We have to isolate for at least 14 days 
Keep your distance. Wear your masks at all times. Keep to yourself. No visitors. Borders are closed. People are working from home. And families are seeing their loved ones from a distance. Not only is the main figure in this story a leper, he is a Samaritan. He is a foreigner. Lepers were culturally isolated, and Samaritans were disliked by Jews. So this created a double level of cultural tension. He was like a double foreigner. A Samaritan leper was a write-off. My background is in accounting. So when we speak of a write-off, we say we remove the asset from the balance sheet. As Jesus approaches the village in verse 12, the lepers call out to him, honoring the Old Testament command not to mix with other people in Leviticus 13 and Numbers 5. They knew enough about Jesus to know that they can cry out to him from a distance. They said, Master! Now, where did they learn this term? Ordinarily employed only by disciples. This we may never know. What is clear is their eagerness to receive something Jesus possessed. And they did not. They are convinced that Jesus would heal them. They want to be included. They want to be welcomed into society and be with their loved ones. This is a cry Jesus is accustomed to. It is a cry for compassion that comes to Jesus many times in his ministry. And what does Jesus do? He tells them, go show yourselves to the priests. Now, one does not just go to the priest until he or she is healed. So by Jesus telling them, go show yourself to the priests, he has indicated to them that they will be healed. And according to the Jewish law, the priests served as purity inspectors. They alone had the authority to determine who was pure and who was not. This order is similar to Elisha's command to Naaman, who was told to go and wash in the Jordan seven times in order to be healed in 2 Kings 5. What did the lepers do? They did not hesitate or question Jesus. They obeyed. Luke says, And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. Today, many people are recovering from the coronavirus, but we must still maintain our social distance. We are told that it will not be safe enough until there is a vaccine. Quarantine and bubble have become a part of our everyday language. Now, one of the men breaks away from this bubble, falls at Jesus' feet, and offers thanksgiving for his cleansing. The Samaritan, the foreigner, is grateful that he has been healed. Jesus immediately asks, Where are the other nine? Did I not heal ten? Now, two things are happening here simultaneously. He commends the attitude of gratitude in the Samaritan, and he also allows that response to him is possible from outside the Jewish nation. Jesus' mercy is offered to everyone, but we must acknowledge what God has done for us. To faith must be added thanksgiving. When you acknowledge what the Lord has done for you, you experience a salvation which goes beyond 
physical cure. Jesus issues the final commendation in verse 19. Your faith has healed you. Jesus' compassion in the midst of rejection is a crucial theme here. When people cry for help, Jesus reaches out and no one is turned away. If we open our hearts and go to him humbly, he is ready to help. Luke reaffirms to us that no one is a foreigner to Jesus. He touches those outside the circle of acceptance. The gratitude the Samaritan showed represents a fundamental response of faith to God's work. He experienced the freedom of salvation in that moment, and he gave thanks. We serve a God of compassion. It is important to recognize when you are covered and protected by the Holy Spirit. How do we give thanks to God? We offer praise when we come together in corporate worship. Luke is filled with passages where people take the time to praise and thank God. Praise is important because it establishes our relationship with God. Allowing time for personal thanksgiving is also important. When we stop running on the treadmill and pause to connect, pray, and spend time with God, we are filled and rejuvenated to jump back on that treadmill. Do not take God's grace for granted. A few weeks ago, a dear friend came to my home for a socially distant cup of tea and some fruit. She's a devout Roman Catholic, and we like to say, uh, sit and pray together. And as I started to pray, I started out by giving thanks to God. And after we prayed, she said to me, Christine, I, I know the Lord has given me a lot, and I am thankful for it, but I don't see it. Friends, why wouldn't we openly give thanks and articulate what the Lord has given to us? Why not? Let us openly give thanks. It is right to give thanks and praise. A famous theologian once said, thanksgiving in everything is the key to experience joy. Luke calls for us to follow in the Samaritan's footsteps. A thankful heart takes time out of their day to honor and to worship God. And worship is more than just lip service. It is honoring him with our lives and following the Great Commission. Don't be a foreigner to God. Claim your birthright. We are his children. God loves us unconditionally and will not let you walk alone. Have an attitude of gratitude today and experience God's bliss in his love. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God and loving Father, creator of our world and ocean of peace, we humbly come before you today with an attitude of gratitude. We are so grateful that we can come to you as your children and not foreigners. In your presence, we experience joy. In your presence, we experience hope. And in your presence, we experience peace. Show us our destination. 
give us direction and let the fire of determination burn in our hearts. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, we pray for families who will be celebrating away from one another. Help them to understand that they are loved despite the distance. We bring before you our loved ones who are sick today. Dear God, you know their pain and their discomfort. Touch them and take away their pain, O Lord. Today we offer a special prayer for the people of Nobleton. Keep them safe and healthy. We pray for grandparents and parents in senior homes who will not see their loved ones today. We pray for children who are away at school or at work. And we pray for our medical professionals, doctors, nurses, and other frontline workers who continue to put their lives at risk for us. Dear Lord, today we pray for our teachers and students as they try to carry on with teaching and learning. We pray for all the leaders in our community, our province, and our country as they continue to make decisions to keep your people safe and as we continue to find answers. Lord, give us encouragement today to endure and defeat this pandemic and open our hearts to have an attitude of gratitude. All these we ask, O God of wisdom, God of mercy, and God of peace, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, on this Thanksgiving Day, it will be very different to all those other Thanksgivings we have celebrated in the past. If you would call your mother, father, aunt, uncle, or your guardian, and thank them today for what they did for you when you were a kid, mark thanks on the comments or in the connection card at stpaulsnobleton.ca. Thank you. Thanks, Christine, for sharing the word. And obviously the Lord approved of your prayer because we heard that little ding that's just like it was from heaven, but I suspect it was from someone's phone. We'd love to connect with you, so if you'll go to stpaulsnobleton.ca slash connect, you can fill in the online connection card. That goes for all of you, too, because the reality is we can't give you a connection card because germs, you know. Uh, so we'd love to be able to uh, answer any questions or offer a prayer or encouragement, whatever it will take. We're going to sing the uh, contemporary song from the 70s, Give Thanks. Please stand. of what the 
You may be seated. We are extremely grateful to all who continue to support the mission of the Lord through St. Paul's Church over the course of these interesting days. And we are especially grateful for ongoing gifts. And there's many ways that you can do that. You can leave a gift in the offering plate at the door when you leave. There are envelopes there. You need to give your own pen because germs. And uh, you can also go to uh, stpaulsnobleton.ca slash donate and you can make a gift through that means. You can uh, use your electronic funds transfer and make a gift by uh, going through your online banking to donate at stpaulsnobleton.ca or you can go old school and mail us a check made to St. Paul's Church Nobleton because we've had to be dealing with the bank out of town because the bank in town's been closed and so the bank out of town doesn't know who we are. So St. Paul's Church Nobleton would be deeply appreciated. We're going to conclude our Thanksgiving worship by singing Shine Jesus Shine, another choice that Christine has made. So if you'll stand, then we will praise the Lord together. There are great places to clap in here, so please... uh, there, you can't spread germs by clapping your own hands, so please feel free to do that if you feel that way inclined. lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> 